In this lesson of the helmet tutorial series, let's look at something very handy, making a spiral shape from a Bezier curve and projecting it onto the side of our helmet. Something like we can see on the reference images right here. All right, ready? Let's jump straight into it where we left off last time. There is of course many possible ways to do this, but in our case, let's start off by using this curve and picking Bezier. With it, we get this slightly curved line that first we need to straighten up. Do that by tapping S to scale, Y to lock the scaling to Y axis and then zero on the numpad. Now you can position the line so that this edge point is somewhere on the center of the scene or rather where the 3D cursor is. Now select all your points and down here in the segments click subdivide and set it to 10 subdivisions. Okay, maybe one more subdivision will help. And now let's start rotating this curve with proportional editing on. Activate it here, check if you have this curve active and then when you hit R and Y, lock the rotation to Y axis, you should get a proportional editing circle that is slightly bigger than the length of your curve. And then with this endpoint selected, start rotating along the Y axis until you get a result like this. After that, maybe rotate a bit more. Select the two endpoints and delete them. And voila, we have a nice spiral like this. You can maybe scale it on Z axis and also duplicate it so that you have one backup just in case. Then reposition your curve with G so that it's in around this area. Jump to edit mode and while selecting the endpoint, open the search bar with F3 and search for the snap cursor to active command. This way the 3D cursor jumps into this area and if you now activate this 3D cursor option in the pivot point, you will be able to rotate your curve along this point. So rotate the curve, scale it to your liking, but don't really stress it too much if it's not perfectly aligned with the surface of the cheek piece. We will figure it out later. You can even go to edit mode and push this ending portion of the curve a bit so that it goes in line with this edge here. Next thing we will do is to add a bit of geometry to our line. You can do it here under depth in the object data properties tab and here you can input 0.1 for example. With that you can immediately go in and through the search menu find this command called convert to and then make a mesh out of the curve. Now we of course have too much geometry here when we look into the edit mode. But we can quickly solve that by adding a decimate modifier and set it to unsubdivide. Resolution of 4 is quite okay. Really the only values I use here are 2 or 4. Other than that when I use odd numbers the decimation is pretty messy and even values like 6, 8 or higher start destroying the mesh. So use 4 Apply the modifier and when you look into the edit mode, you can see that now the geometry is pretty fine except for these ending segments here. So just delete these and then edit the geometry so that it still looks good. Finally, find the shrink wrap modifier, set the target to be the helmet and the mode to outside and uh, it disappeared somewhere. What the? Okay, so nearest vertex, nope. Uh, target normal project, nope. Well then, uh, this sometimes works right away, sometimes not. But let's not give up and try a few extra steps before attempting this again. Let's get rid of this modifier altogether and rather push the geometry into the helmet so that it's halfway through like this. Then rotate it as best as possible and position it a bit better. Also using a rather smaller proportional editing settings and pushing these vertices, you can make sure they go along the edge of the reinforced ridge, not over it. That might help.
You can also make this region smaller to sharpen up the endings of the spiral. Also push these vertices to be somewhat regularly spaced here. We can get rid of this center line and then with Ctrl A apply the rotation and scale. Finally, let's add a solidify modifier and make the thickness big enough so that it goes below the surface of the helmet. And then with Ctrl R you can add two new loops along the edge here so that the spiral is a bit beveled. Finally, let's give the shrink wrap modifier another try. And yes, now it works correctly. The settings I used is the nearest surface point and on surface mode. You can even put it above the solidify modifier and readjust the thickness to go above the surface like this. Now if you start repositioning some of the vertices you can even see that they are nicely following the surface which is exactly what I wanted. We can now even push these edges slightly to the center so that the spiral's edge is not so sharp. We do that of course with the double G shortcut. Cool, that's more like it. Don't forget to add a mirror modifier too, so that it's now on both sides of the helmet. Last thing is playing around a bit with the shape of the spiral so that it's to your liking. I mean, you can safely leave it as it is now, but in the end I decided to broaden the edges here by selecting them and scaling them and then doing the same with the inner edges. By the way, to see the geometry with a bit more resolution, I added a subdivision modifier below everything. Following that, I played around with shaping some of these regions, I pushed around the inner edge loops as well, and then, selecting this row of faces with Alt Select, pushed them out a little. Very important, at this point I applied the shrink wrap modifier. Then, as a last touch, I tried to tighten the outer edges with two more edge loops like this. I kinda like this sharper look. Of course I followed with some final pushing and pulling vertices on the whole shape, submerging this end part underneath the surface of the helmet and trying to straighten up this ending bit. I repeat, this is more about how you like the shape, whether you want it out of the surface or inside. And of course it's good to close it up at the end here with the extrude command and scale it inside then hit F to fill the empty space. Last shaping attempts with the proportional editing active and also pushing these edges so that it's not so sharp. Yeah, I like the result. In the next lesson, we will finally start the UVing process in preparation for the texturing in Substance Painter. And by the way, if you want to prepare yourself for the Substance Painter part of this series, you can already purchase my CG Boost course, where I lead you through the fundamentals of this awesome software and you will learn all you need to know to add it to your own workflow. Besides, you can still get it in early access stage with a 15% discount, so if you're interested, definitely have a look at the link in the description of this video. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this part of the process and I can't wait to see you here next time. Martin out.